All right, I'd like to call the meeting to order the Zoning Board of Appeals in the City of Monona, Thursday, February 17th, 2022. Uh, we don't need to do a roll call. Uh, Doug, you know who's here. Um, yes. And uh, we have two people uh, at least that, here that would like to probably say something, but they can do that during the public hearing section. Uh, unless there's somebody here that uh, would want to speak outside of the public hearing section, we'll move to the approval of minutes. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes from December 16th, 2021? So move. So moved. Do I have a second? I, I wasn't there. Okay. Second. Oh, I think I was muted. Second. Thank you, Diane. Uh, okay, I have a motion and a second. Uh, are there any changes, additions? Hearing none, uh, all those in favor of approving the minutes say aye. 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 I heard two ayes. Do I have more than two ayes on the minutes? Aye. Hi. Okay. I, I saw that as well. Okay. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Uh, minutes are approved. Now we'll move to number five, public hearing. Karen Burkincott. Sorry, yep. how do you pronounce Burnicott. your last name again? It's Burkincott. Burkincott. Thank you. Yep, you 40, did 42, 4203 Winnipeg Road is requesting a variance from Monona Municipal Code of Ordinances, section. 480-24D4C rear yard setbacks for the purpose of building a new attached deck to the existing property. Case number Z-001-2022. So um, Karen, the floor is yours to start. So I'm gonna just keep it pretty simple because I think I did a good job of putting everything in the letter. Um, but I have a non-conforming property. Um, so my house and garage was built like in 1932. So when they built like all the buildings, they built them real far back into the property where it's real close to my property line, which makes it pretty difficult to make improvements on my property. But um, in the spring, I had wanted to make my porch a little bit bigger. So um, right now I have an outside entrance to the basement of my house, which is unusual. I know a lot of people right now don't have that, but that's but I do. And that is how um, I access my laundry. My house is so small, I can't, there's no spot for laundry upstairs. So in order for me to do my laundry, I need to go outside through the porch onto the deck and then lead down into my basement, which is kind of a little bit of a challenge, you know, when you have, you know, laundry baskets in your hand and you've got ice and snow and stuff. But so anyway, um, my main thing I wanted to do was to have a safer entrance into the basement. And in order to do that, I needed to build a much better, safer deck, you know, to the back end of the property. Um, so in the spring, I, I met with the city, kind of talked about, you know, like possibly, you know, trying to make the porch a little bit bigger, but that was not, you know, possible either because of the variance. So my next option was for building a safer deck. Um, I thought that I had actually built what was, you know, a, okay. And then I found out on December 7th that it wasn't okay, <laughs> you know. So anyway, I'm, you know, trying to keep this deck because I do need it for safety. I do need it to be able to access the basement of my house of a much safer level. Um, so that's, that's where I'm at. So I'm, I'm asking to keep this deck that it partially built, you know, so, and it, it's truly about safety and trying to maintain or stay in my house as long as I can, as I age, you know, so I have a small house. I want to stay here. 
And I have to make some changes to be able to make that outside entrance area to the basement a little safer. So. Thank you. Um, do you, uh, I assume that you two are here to do more than listen. Would you like to, this is a public hearing portion. So if you'd like to say anything about her, uh, her um, request for a variance, this is your time to do it. Did you just want to listen or did you want to say something? My name is Bob Worm and I have the property right next to hers in the back. So her deck would be facing my backyard. And I feel there's no hardship or anything by her building that deck. So I'm in favor. Okay. Okay. Right. Okay. Bear, <clears throat> Menora, I 81 years. So I've seen a lot of changes. I've seen her house go by a lot of people that have rented her own deck. She does a good job. She's pretty decent. Uh, I don't see it hurting anybody for what she wants to do. You know, it's like, yeah. it's, it's no, it's not anything off of anybody's. Okay. It's just that I couldn't, I couldn't say no, you can't do it. I, I can't, that's like taking somebody's life away. So I'm in favor. Okay. Doug, were you able to hear them clearly enough? Okay, great. Thank you, just checking. Um, you said that your, uh, your contractor was here? Yeah, Brady, Brady Bolin with Rooster Construction. Okay. Do you want to say anything before we open it up to the members of the board? Um. Yeah. We're, I'm. Whatever. Uh, we need to do to make the city happy. I'm all for. Um, and I think it. It's not a extremely large deck either. It's. It's rather because it, the house is small, so the deck's kind of small. We. I think it's for safety reasons, it's a good size for her to get in and out of there. And that's about it. Okay. Thank you. Um, Doug, did you have any other for this public hearing portion? Were there any any other uh, writing to, by people who wrote in or anything like that on this? Not, nothing else received. Uh, there were a couple letters in the packet uh, that was yep. submitted by the applicant, uh, but nothing else has come in. Okay, thank you. All right, with that, we'll close the public hearing uh, and move to um, number six, consideration of action on 4203 Winnipeg Road, requesting a variance for Monona Municipal Code of Ordinances, section 480.24D, 4C, rear yard setbacks for the purpose of building a new attached deck to the existing property. Case number Z-001-2022. Doug, would you like to say anything? Sure, I can just, I can just kick it off. Uh, so from a, a zoning perspective from setbacks, the deck is gonna be treated uh, the same as it would be for the primary structure. Uh, so the setbacks for that are gonna be 40, 40 feet from the, the rear yard property line. Uh, as well as seven feet from both side yards. Um, and so the, the side yards uh, appear to be clear um, and it is just the rear yard that needs to be considered tonight. I should have mentioned this. I, I think uh, you probably all gathered it. I should have mentioned it in the email though that the, the deck uh, was partially constructed. Um, it was one of those that uh, we, the building inspector found it. Um, there were not permits that had been pulled. And so we sort of stopped work and that's where we got, how we got to this juncture. Um, we have been working with the applicant on the, um, on the porch in the back. Uh, and so we were sort of speaking about different options. Um, I have spoken that, you know, the, uh, a brick paver or a concrete patio is able to go in. Um, that is not subject to setbacks, but, um, in speaking with the applicant, as I understand it, it was not something, um, from a safety perspective that met you know the intent of, of the design and again um correct me if i'm wrong but there was an existing deck there um in in a smaller footprint um i believe but 
it was one of those again where the addition or the increase was needed um, for the safety purposes. Uh, so just as a reminder, it would be allowed um, if it was like for like, um, you know, a replacement of existing, uh, which was the case with the porch. Uh, if there's no expansion, but this one has a slight expansion, um, therefore requiring the variance. So that's it for me. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, with that, we'll open it up, Chris. Uh, I'm curious how different the size is of the new deck from the old deck, and why did you have to make it bigger for safety reasons? So the other deck, I have to be honest, I never measured it, you know, but I'm guessing it was probably, you know, like eight by eight, eight by nine, you okay. know, and, you know, it's when you're maneuvering in and out of the back end of the porch and you have limited space, you know, and that, you know, I just felt that I needed more space for safety to be able to maneuver around properly. Okay. Um, right. So again, that's what I felt for like future purposes, you know, um, you know, if I'm ever out there and I have like a walker or something, I'm planning for the future, not sure. just today. You know, my thing is, is that if I, you know, need to make an adjustment, I don't want to do it twice, you know, so it's like, do it now before I'm too old, <laughs> you know, so, but it's, it's very important to me. I mean, I need that a safe structure being, I still have to go outside to enter into the basement, you know, it needs to be a solid, nice structure for me. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, is, is the, so my understanding correctly, the screen porch is uh, the same footprint as your previous one? It is. It's okay. a three season porch. Nothing mm -hmm. changed on the porch and which is why I didn't, you know, nothing changed, you know, except okay. for like, it was rotted. It was so bad. I don't know if you ever walked in the back of San Damiano, you could have seen my house and it looked like a shack. You know, so there was a lot of rotten wood. So I'm really proud of myself. I'm excited for the change. It looks so pretty at this point, but yeah, no, no change in any layouts at all. You know, that's completely the same. Okay, thank you. Is can also the is the um, I see the back the the in the photos. It looks like we have a picture of the back basement door to the one that's at the yeah. foot of the steps okay there is. Yeah. All right, will there be a roof or some or is is there going to be an overhang over that or I'm just trying to envision you know not currently however I have thought about that you know I'm just basically just trying to get through this mm -hmm. you know phase of the game and to be honest like I have thought about like maybe there should be a little bit of an overhang to kind of help you know, more with like the ice and the rain and stuff. But um, I would like to see that in the future, but it wasn't in this plan. Cause right now I was just more excited about, let's just get some stuff cleaned up, you know? Mm -hmm. Thank so you. I'm sure Brady would be happy to help me with that. <laughs> <laughs> so. How does the deck offer you uh, better safety or better access to the basement um, as compared to the uh, porch or the deck rather. Oh, I'm sorry. Say that again. How does the, uh, how does the deck offer you better access to the basement as opposed to like a, a poured concrete porch or patio? Oh, okay. Yeah. And that's a really good question. So my deck comes straight out from the porch you know, which is so much easier to access the porch just on a, you know, a raised level, because otherwise, if I have to go down to like the porch or excuse me, the patio, I'm going downstairs. I mean, steps right out of the side of my house. And then it's like I'm landing on like the cement. So I want a raised level that I'm coming straight out of my house where it's balanced you know, so then I can walk right out without needing to go downstairs immediately. This way, it's like I'm on a flat landing. And therefore, it's like, you know, I can turn to the left and there's like a nice solid structure of stairs that's going down to the basement or to the basement door. 
So, and personally, I find too concrete. Um, I don't feel that that's safer, you know, because concrete can crack up. And then you're actually, to me, you have a little bit more maintenance to that as time goes on. And, you know, to me, that's a little bit more of a tripping hazard. So I don't feel concrete and patio does not solve my problems with, you know, having a safer entrance to the basement. So your, your, your house is 20 feet from the, am I reading this? it's 20 feet from the lot line, the back of your house before the porch and the, I'm just looking at, at so, this. Yeah. Okay. So do you have the survey? Yeah. The actual survey. Um, so that survey, you know, I, maybe it was 20 feet, I, but like before the porch, mm -hmm. I think it was like yeah. 13. I mean, my whole entire house is not even within 40 feet of the, <laughs> and so I'm like, I have a pretty non-conforming lot, but so it's, yeah, so 20, I'm sorry, I actually don't know the exact footage, but I think it was like 13 at one point was like to that deck, and so I okay. think, let me, let me look here, I've got the, I, I, I can, believe it was yeah. 20, 20 to the house, but that the porch was about six feet, and then the the three seasons porch was six feet. And then it was the deck was ten feet, and then the lot line varied from uh, six to eight or some something in there because it was on that weird angle, I believe. Right. I I can jump in on on that one. Um, there was some questions about that as to whether the the survey um because i think it's from um i think it's a little dated at this point i think 2000 uh, so there was a question as to where the the property finished and where the deck began um i did confirm with the building inspector that the the current location of the deck does not extend beyond the detached garage which is pretty much the the lot line mm -hmm. um it looks as though the fence is is a little bit over um so the exact location of the the property line may not be as, as visible, uh, but the deck does not extend uh, further north than, than the garage. So it's definitely within the lot, uh, but it may be something, um, you know, the, the, the board wants to consider that maybe those corners be be flagged just to verify that, you know, um, that, the, that it is with completely within. Um, but it, it looks uh, from the material submitted at closest point three feet, uh, but it could be a little bit less, but it should be completely on the property. Right. Yeah. Other questions? If if not approved, how would your um, uh, use of your basement and your laundry room be impacted if there was like inclement weather? It, it does impact me if I can't get it approved. Yeah. You know, because it's, it's all about safety. You know, um, it's, it would be icy, you know, increment weather, you know, so it's like, I'm needing to try and like have a safer entrance, you know, especially when it, if it's slippery or icy and stuff like that, because, you know, yeah. It's, I need that deck for a better entrance. And it could, it could impact my decision on how long I would be able to stay in Monona because I love this house. Unfortunately, I don't really have the budget to go bigger, you know, and stuff. So it's, um, I'm, I'm hoping to stay here. And this is what I feel like is going to help me continue to be, you know, a resident in this neighborhood, which I want to be here. Yeah. Do you know why construction was started without this issue being flagged, given the um, position of your house to the uh, rear lot? Why did we start it without a permit? Is that what you're asking? Or Yeah, do you know why it wasn't flagged, why this wasn't 
uh, requested before construction began? I'm not sure what I, if I know what you're asking. I apologize. I, I guess I, I'm asking and maybe maybe your contractor can help out about why you know why construction got part way through before before this issue was flagged that it was uh, um, going to require a variance. I believe it's. Oh, do you want me to jump in or? I mean, Brady, you can too. But I I believe it got flagged because we didn't have the permit. Am I correct, Doug? Yeah. So. And I was and, really un under the impression that from my meeting in like May that I was okay with what I was doing. <laughs> and I don't mean to laugh. I really mean that sincerely because I certainly wasn't trying to pull anything because I had met with the city and had the inspector at my house in May um, where the work is being done. My front yard was, you know, filled with vehicles. And I face like San Damiano, which is the prime spot these days. So it's not like I was trying to pull anything on anybody, you know, but I really just thought what we were doing was okay. So, but yeah. Does your builder want to say anything more about this since he would be the person that would normally pull a permit? Yeah. What I, I thought if the, and this might have been somewhat my mistake, but we kept the three seasons porch, the same footprint. So I, I really didn't, and I was talking with Karen about it and I thought she was talking with the building inspector and it might've been just a little bit of miscommunication, but we did not think we needed a permit at that time. And then when we were told we needed to, we obviously just shut the project down and wanted to make sure we're doing everything properly. Diane, your face came up, leading me to believe that maybe you breathed and so they thought you were gonna to speak to you have something oh. on set. <laughs> No, I don't have any further questions. So I'm just waiting for the rest of the board to see if they have anything further to add. Beth, since do you have any questions? Beth was on, yes. There we go. Um, I guess my biggest concern is that it's not a unique um, limitation, it's the house that is, it's the structure. Um, or that's mm -hmm. what I'm looking at um, as far as meeting the other, um, all of the um, decision, um, the issues in the decision. So I don't know that I mean, you have, you have a large tree right in front of your house. I cut that down in October. Okay. Yeah. It was ready to fall, so I cut it down. <laughs> yeah. Better on your own terms than... Yeah, having... <laughs> right. Exactly. I mean, there is... I mean, I don't know how recent your picture is. There is another tree, but it's out further. I think the tree you're looking at probably is like about 10 feet from the house. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's gone. Yeah, <laughs> so... Yeah. I don't. I don't really have any other questions. Brad, Chris, any other questions? No other questions. Does anybody want to take a stab at the motion? A motion. I'd like to uh, make a motion. I'd like to make a motion to approve. I feel like although it is a structure um, limitation, it's also, I believe, creating an unnecessary hardship just because it was obviously built before we had zoning 
uh, ordinances and, and codes and whatnot. And the fact that it was put so it definitely could have, the lot is deep enough, it could have been conforming had it been placed um, not 60 feet back into the lot. Um, so I think that a unnecessary hardship on this would be safety issues because the only way to access the basement, whether it be for laundry or storms or anything of that nature, is to go outside. And it's not uh, safe to be walking around out in icy snow, just bad conditions when you're um, having to access the basement for your daily living, um, activities of daily living, which laundry would be considered. Uh, so I think that that to, to remodel and to try to get an inside entrance to the basement would be an unburdensome hardship to the, to the uh, homeowner. I feel like um, the unique uh, property limitation is just, as I said, wherever the house was put so deep into the backyard. I mean, it's almost to the fence line. And I think since we have no harm to the public interest, we have two letters of support. We have two residents here and we have a verbal um, as well. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So I have a motion on the floor. Do I have a second? I second. I agree. Sorry, who was that saying? Again? Brad, we can't hear you. All right. I, I said I second. I think that the uh, access to the laundry issue is a uh, is uh, a permitted purpose that's being um, unreasonably prevented. Um, I think there's unique physical property limitation in the building envelope. I don't see any harm to the public interest. I see some improvements to the public interest. So uh, for those reasons, I'd second. Okay. I have a motion and a second. Uh, any other discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. I have Thank a big you. smile on my face. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. This, this really means a lot to me. Glad, glad, glad we could Thank do you, it. Bob. You're welcome. Here. Thank you, guys. Thanks. Thank you, Jack. So where do I go from here? <laughs> well, how do I move forward? <laughs> I'll, I'll be in touch. I need to get um, a permit. I know that. You know. <laughs> I'll be in touch in the next few days with the thank you. Um, with the okay. plans. Yeah, we're still uh, alive with the board meeting. And, and then um, you. you will take those. Uh, I'll copy you the building can, inspector. We're, we're still meeting, but you can pull go the permits. You don't um, have to. We're I this one will probably want to. You know, the building inspector may want to look at footings, things like that. Yes, uh, yeah, but, we'll do whatever we need to do to get that. Yeah. So thank yeah. you. All right. Have a good night, everybody. Oh, wait, night. am I done? <laughs> or do I need to stick around a little bit longer? I don't know how this goes. <laughs> you're, all, you're all set. You can drop off. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, we're still meeting, so I can't, right. I need to. Good night. Can I finish up the meeting? She's she we 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 approved it, Jack. So we're good. Yeah. 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 And I'm sure she appreciates that you that you were such a good neighbor to come, both of you guys. Thanks, you too. Good to see you. you too. See you again soon. Take care of yourself. Do the best. I know. We all are. okay. <laughs> Uh, that was crap. <laughs> See you again. Yeah, take care, Jack. Okay. Um, thank you all. So uh, next meeting date, upcoming meeting. Upcoming meetings. Um, we're canceling March 17th. <laughs> Yeah, it was, uh, I'd, I'd like to speak to the board about that, if, if I may. Um, yes. I will actually be out on vacation on that date. Um, so my initial plan was to, to cancel the meeting. I have since had a meeting or a, an application come through targeting a March hearing. 
uh, what we've done in the past is possibly push that a week, maybe um, if, if schedules allow um, sort of further out. So I think the, the 24th, uh, failing that we would just, you know, put it onto the, the April agenda, but I, I can send an email to follow up, but um, I, I just wanted to see if, if there was consensus from the board um, and availability to, to potentially adapt um, to accept that application. I can do the 24th. I cannot. <laughs> I can do the 24th. Great. So what I'll do, I'll um, circulate an email uh, so that we can we can just finalize that uh, and, and go from there. But I appreciate that feedback. Thank you. Yeah, uh, I have to. Uh, I don't have. Uh, I, I think I can do the 24th too. But uh, okay. but I, I'll confirm with you. Thank you. And I need to check on room availability and things. Uh, I know yep. when we've pushed in the past, we've sometimes had a conflict with another committee meeting. So I need to right. double check all those things. Right, right. Thank okay. you. Sure. Any updates, discussion on DEIB issues? Uh, nothing specifically. Um, I, I am in conversation. Um, one of the, the olders involved uh, with the DEI um, efforts specifically has, has contacted me about, you know, zoning discussion and sort of inclusive inclusivity uh, and opportunities there. So it's it's a much larger conversation um, to, to have, but uh, I just wanted to let you all know um, things, you know, maybe at least brought up for, for discussion. Right. It's it's a it's a much bigger uh, item, but certainly something that, that's on the radar for sure. Right. And I and I know too, Doug, that I, that I brought um, brought to Leah's attention um, a while back um, the whole idea of uh, potentially having our um, kind of the city prioritizing those documents and applications and permit things translated into um, Spanish. Mm -hmm. So that when people that um, uh, you know need that, um, we have that available. Um, and and I think there is a need to sort of pry because it doesn't necessarily have to be everything all at once, but the things that would be um, highest priority. And and she was going to bring that to a staff meeting. Do you know if that's been discussed at all? I believe that it was mentioned. Um, right. it, it it does sound familiar, but um, yeah, I that's a good point. To does does quite a few in the planning department and, and a couple that I think would be more beneficial to prioritize first. So that's, that's a good reminder. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and then there's updates, discussion on sustainability efforts. Um, we're, we've now, for those of you that may not know, we've starting the first of this year, we added this to uh, to all of the agendas for all of the committees and to the city council as well. Um, and the idea behind that is, um, uh, it was actually came from a vote of uh, the Sustainability Committee, which Chris Conrad also serves on, um, and I chair. And, um, and that came from a place of feeling like, um, you know, honestly, the, the city and the departments are doing a lot more on the sustainability front than they're given credit for, and they don't, um, all of the department heads as well. Um, have reports that they submit on a monthly basis to the city council. And th that's also to have uh, initiatives on there too. So while we see things like the police are gonna buy a hybrid cruiser instead of this other cruiser, when we, when we do a capital budget, as I said, all the departments have really been working hard on this and the city as a whole has invested a lot in their buildings, et cetera. So we just really felt you know, we, we have found with the DEIB things, frankly, um, initiatives that having on the agenda every week is has been really helpful in terms of holding us accountable to our commitment there. And similarly, because sustainability is one of our top priorities as a city, um, uh, another top priority in the city that, that I'm having on the agendas would be to hold us accountable, uh, similarly. So, and allow, us to kind of total up at the end of the year uh, the initiatives that we've actually taken in an easier way because it's on staff reports uh, and such so that it's easier to sort of tabulate the progress that we've made over the course of the year. Um, 
and uh, you know that's and, and being able to report out on that more specifically um, is something that's a focus of the sustainability committee uh, right now too. Um, just on a lot of different fronts. So um, so that's where that that came from. Um, and obviously in this discussion, uh, there's not, uh, or in this committee, there's not necessarily anything that, or, or much that we might do. Um, although I, I suppose certainly if we change zoning in some way, or if somebody came forward asking for a variance because they were wanting to do geothermal or they, or they were doing, taking some other efforts on their house to be more sustainable and they were, you know, uh, and that required a variance, then certainly it would come in into play, but um, but that's why it's there. So I, I'll let you know that. Um, with that, unless anybody has anything else, yeah, Chris. I was just thinking in that spirit, um, perhaps one, one additional item we could consider including on the, on the request for variance application checklist is um, what, if any, environmental impact would this variance have were it to be approved? I don't know. That's great. Good suggestion. Anything else? I hope you all have a great night. Yeah, I hope you do too. And you guys, thank you. I know it's unusual that we have something half built before we see it. <laughs> uh, and um, um, but, and I, but I appreciate the consideration uh, tonight as always. So thank you and everybody stay healthy. Doug is home for a reason tonight. What's the score today, Doug? Uh, gonna go and take a test now, uh, so we'll see. But um, I'm in COVID purgatory. <laughs> <laughs> um, two of the family have got it and I'm feeling symptoms. So I'm expecting my rapid test to come back positive. But I say that each day, so we'll, we'll see. So. Oh, God. Well, geez, I'm sorry. So I, hope, I hope you uh, weather it okay, uh, and I'm sorry to hear it. Thank you. All hang in there. Yeah. I hope yeah. you binge watch lots of shows. shows. <laughs> I've got a nine-month-old that's keeping me busy, so <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, she's keeping me out of trouble. <laughs> yeah. So with that, I'll take a motion to adjourn. I'll move to adjourn. Move to adjourn. I, do I have a second? I'll second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 We are adjourned. Thank you very much, everybody. I really appreciate it. <laughs>